It's been, what, three weeks since I made my last video? Yeah, it has, and if you're wondering why it took me so long to make another video, then I have two things to say to you. One, the Steam Autumn sales came along and stole money right out of my pocket, giving me way too many games to play and enough time to play them. And second, I have enjoyed the sheer catharsis of listening to a 10-hour loop of this. <laughs> until my brain melted and I was left in a vegetative state. But no matter, the video is here now, so stop complaining. Let's go. Now, unless you are three years old and cannot read, you probably have gathered that this video is about gaming's worst and best controllers. Let's start with the worst, because that's simply what we're going to do. Why, oh why, was the Genesis controller praised for having the grand total of three buttons when it got rid of the select button, bring the total number of buttons down to the same amount of buttons that was on an NES controller, which it was trying to outdo? Fuck me if I know, but all I can say is that that is not only bullshit, it's also uncomfortable. It's kind of got that shape that's trying to ergonomically fit your hands, but fails at doing so because your hand is not somewhat to the shape of a banana. The Genesis controller was not a step forward, nor was it a step back. It just stood still, not moving, like a cat, considering if it actually wants to go out or not. I'm going to give you three seconds to work out what is wrong with this picture. Exactly, it's only got one cable plugged in, therefore you cannot play it. If that's what you thought, congratulations, you're wrong. Now leave. If you thought, what the fuck is this? The controller is bigger than the competitor's console. Then you are correct, congratulations, you get a hefty slap on the back. I don't know how anybody could mess this up so badly. It's not like they packed the controller with so many buttons that it had to be that size. It has the same amount of buttons as the PS2 controller. The most likely cause of this abomination, namely the very first Xbox controller, is probably that this man was the tester for the console. Anything. Anything that utilizes a number pad as part of a gamepad should not exist and burn for all eternity in hell along with the jackasses that designed this flaw. The Atari 2600 controller had it all. A joystick and a button. It's all you need to have a great time in front of your own screen. After snorting their own body weight in cocaine, the designers promptly decided that adding another 11 buttons would improve handling the thing better. If I want to flick the channels on my TV, fair enough. If I want to play a game, no. Fuck Ian! that. No! Portable gaming on handheld consoles, that is, seems to be a dying race. As much as everybody tries to keep it alive with the PS Vita and the 3DS, not very many people like to be seen outside the comfort of their own home with a console in their hand. That's why the sometimes not so shitty iPhone games are dominating the outdoor in-bus on toilet market. While I do think that the PS Vita is a good console and quite fitting into the average person's hands, the PSP was atrocious. The lack of a second analog stick was disturbing to say the least, but the analog stick that was present was so small and fiddly in the first place that I couldn't keep my thumb on it for more than five minutes before it slipped off. And camera control is such a necessity in gaming nowadays that most game developers try to integrate the camera control into the D-pad, which means you have to use your index finger to control the camera. I don't think I have to tell you that this can be very uncomfortable at times. You. Yes, you. You are a piece of shit. I have never played a game where you were actually good. Don't get offended, it's not my fault, it's Microsoft's. You are the controller, they say. Great. Motion controlling needs to die because it is shit. It is a gimmick that does not immerse you into a game, but rather takes you out of it. The precision that most games want you to have, but simply cannot make you deliver, is out of this world. Plus, standing up is not immersive. You cannot relax, which is what gaming as a media is there to do for you, while standing up. I want to be able to feel my knees and anything below that after gaming, not having to rub them back into existence. The only people I can imagine actually enjoying motion controlling is the bloody Queen's Guard. Now that I have vented all the pent-up rage inside me, we can commence with the actual good controllers that make me feel right at home. Yes, it is my nostalgia speaking here, and no, I shouldn't let subjectivity flow into my top 5, but it hasn't stopped me in the past and it sure as hell won't now. The NES controller was and still is a perfect fit in my hand. It might be a rectangle, but so what? It still fits into my hand without the slightest contortions of my fingers. Four buttons and a D-pad, that's all it was. Plus, there is an NES belt, which is... <clears throat> tubular. There has always been and will always be debates about what the best controller is. At the moment it's between PS3 and Xbox 360. Fact is, I don't care, I like both of them. After a long debate with myself, I decided that at number 4 I'm picking the DualShock controller. The DualShock controller was great simply for the fact that it had two joysticks. They were long overdue by the time they finally arrived, and when they did they were perfect. I can however not describe the PlayStation controllers without a few gripes. Six axis is a waste of time. The biggest debate has always been the positioning of the analog sticks, both at the bottom like the PS3, one up one down like on the Xbox, or both up like on the Wii U. That's an argument I cannot settle, and since I want to keep all of my kidneys and not get beaten up by fanboys, I'm going to say all of them. If I hadn't mentioned it before, I was obviously going to mention it now. The Xbox 360 controller is the main reason why nobody can really hate on Microsoft anymore because they've actually improved something. Until they came out with the Kinect, of course. It's basically a perfect controller. It fits most hands perfectly, it fits my hands perfectly. Then again, I do have hands the size of a 14 year old girl's hands, but that doesn't matter. It's evident that the main influence on this controller was the PlayStation controller, but it does it so well that you can't really complain about it. Unfortunately, the D-pad is about as good as a heap of unwashed clothing. It feels very similar to the PSP's analog stick. It also has a defining characteristic which wasn't the selling point for me, but I do understand it. The thumbsticks are built for your thumbs, with indented thumbsticks, not bulged thumbsticks like the PS3 controllers. The selling point for me, and by far my favourite feature, is the fact that it's compatible with 99% of all PC games nowadays. And it's the sole reason why I actually own an Xbox 360 controller. My entire life, I've been a console gamer. 
I only ever played consoles and never ever played PC games because they didn't have a gamepad. Now that I've sobered up a little bit, I have to admit that a simple mouse and keyboard is an amazing job of being amazing. That, ladies and gentlemen, was Tautology at its finest. There is no console game that could not be comfortably played on PC, however there are PC games that could never be played comfortably on console. MMORPGs and real-time strategy games are the only thing I can think of right now, but there are more. Mouse and keyboard may not be the most intuitive controller there is, with ambiguous usage of buttons, and sometimes default buttons are not comfortable to reach, for example, anything that would be used with the right hand, because the right hand is meant for the mouse. However, due to the nearly unlimited customizability of your controls, that doesn't really matter anymore. The mouse and keyboard adapts to you, not the other way around. I do, however, still not belong to the alleged PC gaming master race, and would much rather make out with a cheese grater than be associated with anybody who thinks like that. I am not going to say, and the number one is, because that's what everybody says, and if I said that, I'd be like everybody, and nobody wants that. With all my talk about the near endless customizability of mouse and keyboard and how it adapts to you, it seems a little hypocritical to name a gamepad as number one. Which leads me to another thing which I'm never going to say again, but it's my list so I can do what I want. Because everybody says that. And if I say that, I would be like everybody. And nobody wants that. The GameCube controller is by far and without a doubt the best controller ever created by man. The opinions of this reviewer are not defining factors in what may or may not be the best controller in the world and should not be seen as such. Actually, it would be better not listening to this blathering idiot as he usually doesn't know what he's talking about. You heard it, the GameCube controller. It was created to fit human hands, it was designed to ergonomically improve hand and finger strength, and it's just perfect. The way the buttons are set up is a slightly peculiar but perfect choice. Another thing the GameCube controller does is it enables every single button and stick with its size to importance ratio and direct relationship. You'll notice the A button is much bigger than let's say the Y button, and the left analog stick is notably bigger than the right analog stick. And while there will always be dichotomy about what the best controller is, I am right. Some people might like to get a train to work or drive in in a Beamer or a Merc. Some guys like to travel in by bus, but I can't be bothered with a fuss today. I gotta take my bike, cause once again the tube's on strike. The greedy bastards want extra pay for sitting on their ass all day, even though they.